All right, all, and welcome back to a new video in which we are going to be covering the Fairy House Easter Festival Day One card for Easter Sunday. It's a it's a good card. It's a great festival, obviously culminating in the Irish Grand National on Easter Monday, and we have the Ryanair Gold Cup on the Sunday. So all good. I'm only going to be flying through them. Uh, I'm away at the moment uh, on a bit of a break, so it's going to be short videos for these. Uh, wait. Um, cards even and then I'll be back probably into slightly bigger videos for the punch stand festival in a week or two's time bear in mind this is on Saturday morning so the SPs for a lot of these races haven't even come out yet so do bear that in mind I'm sorry if they end up all going all favorite but that's nothing I can really do about it starting off with the 150 the maiden hurdle I'm a big fan of Mr. Everest here for Tony Martin. Uh, I backed it when he won the November Handicap at Nace on the flat over a mile six. He's had two decent enough runs over hurdles, including a second to triplicate, who obviously was quite closely tied in with Aramon for a lot of his form this season in novice hurdles. He looks to have a very good chance. The only problem is whether he's going to be particularly wound up for today or whether there's going to be future flat or hurdle targets for him. Robbie Powers booked though, which would make me feel that he is ready and primed to go, and I think Mr. Everts will take a lot of beating. In terms of one to perhaps just keep an eye out for, I'm not sure whether it'll be an each-way price or not, but the Emmett Mullen straight Ook Su is an, a very interesting newcomer with uh, David Mullins in the plate. In the 220 then, the Novice Handicap Hurdle, one of the tougher races on the card, I must confess. I like the look here of Avalino, again another horse returning from a long absence, trained by Dermot Anthony McLaughlin, Robbie Power in the saddle. Won a maiden hurdle at around this time last year, loves better ground, and I just think she could well be primed for a big run off this long layoff. Obviously that's the risk you're taking backing her but it's a risk I'm going to be willing to take. And the Caddy Rose for Noel Mead has been slightly off the boil the last twice, but had won the two previous times to that. This could probably be her ideal trip, having raced over two miles at Leopardstown and then three miles last time out. Maybe 2-4 is where she needs Sean Flanagan booked in the saddle. The Mare's Novice Hurdle, the Grade 1, is a very interesting race. I'd be prepared to take a watching brief on a few of these at the top of the market. Honeysuckle obviously suffered a little bit of a setback, so I'm not sure whether she'll be properly fit and ready to go. Eglantine de Soy, I'd prefer to see more concrete evidence than just that Cheltenham run. So therefore, I'm just throwing in two at each way prices here. Obviously, if you have a if you think Honeysuckle's a good thing, go on and back it. But I think Sassy Diva and Callie de Menil, uh, they're 14-1 to 1 and 16-1 to 1 respectively. Shane Crawley and Willie Mullins. Sassy Diva won a mare's handicap at the uh, Dublin Racing Festival very nicely. Should go quite well. Callie de Menil, if she jumps better, she would be right there. I don't know whether she can or not. 320 at Ferry House probably sees my biggest bet of the day, to be honest. I'm really keen on 8 done yet. I uh, was there at Ferry House when he tipped up at the last, when he was going to beat Dakota Moret, and then I saw him again at Leopardstown, and he won really convincingly. Looks like chasing really is his game. He's a massive horse, and I think he'll take all the beating in the 2-5 handicap chase. The two-mile handicap chase, I've got two against the field here. Two I both backed in the close, but there's riders on the storm for Tom Taff and Camino for Paul Nolan. Camino run, won a very similar race to this at the Dublin Racing Festival. Riders on the storm has looked as if one of these races is really within his realms, and I'm hoping that will be today, although he could be short enough. The Ryanair Gold Cup, Mengli Khan. I do like Mengli Khan, but I have a feeling this might be a step too far. Real steel. Uh, is a horse I've never really taken to. So Aidan Anthony Howard's uh, Winter Escape would be my play in here. Be that Plutar last time going right-handed. He probably is a bit better going right-handed, and therefore I'm prepared to forgive him his latest run behind Le Vagarois. He's missed uh, Cheltenham, and 3-1 to one for a fresh horse seems a good bet to me. And in the sales bumper, always a very difficult one. I'd say these two will end up being short enough, but Fakiera for Gordon Elliott and Lisa O'Neill seems like a one seems like one that will have a great chance there. Um, 
usually Elliot has a decent, obviously Elliot has a very good rec record in these sort of bumpers. And one uh, who might be a little bigger is Where the Winds Blow for Jessica Harrington and Finney Maguire, who have been a very profitable partnership in bumpers in Ireland this year. Uh, Jessica Harrington usually unleashes a good one or two in this race. She's got three running in this, so you have to take it on trust that Finney Maguire is riding the best one, and Where's the Wind Blow could go close. Anyway, I'm sorry it obviously takes away a little bit from the video not having the SPs, but it's the only time I can record the video and hopefully get it out to you guys. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It's going to be obviously the Fairy House uh, previews for the next two days and then the Punch of Sound Festival where there will be five days worth of previews and then obviously into the flat season. So until next time, which will be tomorrow, best of luck.